tombstone carvings are a great way to add some much needed character to an otherwise flat canvas. But finding store-bought appliques to fit your need are hard to come by. In this video, I'm going to show you how I took a piece of foam and turned it into a bit of cemetery symbolism. To get started, I took a half-inch piece of foam and used some double-sided carpet tape to help keep it in place on my Lazy Susan. This is the best way to keep your materials secure while still giving you the flexibility to rotate it as needed. I found a photo online of the pointing finger image that I liked, scaled it up to the size I needed for my tombstone, and printed it out. Then I'll hold it in place with a few pins and trace the details into the foam. Once I've transferred all the details, I'll go over those lines with a sharpie to make them easier to follow. This will be my guide for all the major details that I'll follow as I begin to sand and shave down the foam into the finished piece. It's important to keep your reference image nearby to help with any of the details that you didn't trace onto the foam, like shading or textures. It's also great to have some kind of physical reference, in this case my own hand, to help inform any decisions about how deep to sculpt a particular feature or to answer questions that can't be determined from your reference photo. I'll start roughing out the shapes with a Dremel tool. This bit has a soft taper to it, so I figured it would help make the transitions look a bit more natural, but you could use a variety of Dremel bits for this passive carving. Once I had the larger details carved out, I decided to switch to a sanding stick to shave down the edges and add in the shallow recesses around the knuckles and in the palm. This is the most time-consuming part of making your own applique, especially if you're like me and you're not used to working at a smaller scale. But using the sanding sticks keeps you from removing too much material at once so that you can build in a bit of a safety net. To create some deeper recesses without removing too much material, I grabbed an X-Acto knife to cut the lines between fingers and pick out some bits of foam in the areas that were going to be more dimensional. You could use a utility knife or even a razor blade for this step. As the shape starts getting more defined, you'll notice that I switch back and forth between all of the different tools to help refine each area, checking my reference image and my own hand to make sure I'm capturing all the details.
When I'm happy with the overall shape, I'll sand down the back with my belt sander to roughly a half inch of foam, and then I'll do some more by hand to make sure it lays completely flat. Because this piece was going to be painted with dry lock, I knew that I didn't have to get too detailed with the sculpting. So when I felt like I had captured the important details, it was time to coat it with dry lock and call it done. As you can see, a lot of the uneven texture in my carving has been hidden by paint, and all of the major anatomical landmarks are deep enough that you can make out that it's a hand with a pointing finger. The only thing to do now is apply the carving to my tombstone with Gorilla Glue, and after some paint and weathering, the tombstone was done. Carving foam can be challenging, but if you plan it out and you take your time, you'd be surprised at what you're capable of making. Well, that's going to do it for this video. If you want to see more tutorials like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit the notification bell to be alerted to the next time we put out another one. And until then, happy haunting.